नमस्कार इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल अबाउट द प्लैनेट्स द नेम्स ऑफ द साइंस इन द जुडियक द लॉर्ड्स ऑफ द साइंस इन द जुडियक द प्लैनेट्स ओन साइन फ्रेंडली साइन एनिमी साइन एंड प्लैनेट्स एक्सल्टेशन डेविटेशन पॉइंट द मूल त्रिकोण और ट्राइंस एंड देयर डिग्री पोजिशन the planets enemy friend neutral etc these were the basic knowledge of astrology it is very important to remember those properly now we will learn how to interpret the diagram of a bar chart we will also get to know concepts like ascendant and house etc before starting the program i would like to request you to subscribe my channel and thanks to those who have already subscribed my channel i have started teaching astrology through these videos in youtube that is why i have also started membership program in my channel so if you want to learn astrology from your home please join my channel take membership as you required and keep learning astrology a bar chart or horoscope also called kundli in india can be called a map of planetary position at the time of birth these are several different ways of portraying bar chart in different parts of india mainly horoscope is drawn in three major ways north indian style south indian style and east indian style also called bengali style i will talk about three types of zodiac diagram here if you are north indian then follow north indian style and if you are south indian follow the south indian style a bar chart tells about the position of planets in houses and signs we have already discussed about the planets and zodiac signs and we will talk about houses a little bit later in north indian diagram of bar chart ascendant sign is written on very first place and then sign are shown from right to left it means signs are depicted anti clockwise and the number corresponding to zodiac sign is shown in each box those numbers represent the zodiac signs now look at the example chart to understand clearly look at this chart here ascendant is written and this is this box is fixed for ascendant and how we recognize the sign through this number number 9 is written here that means it is sagittarius number 1 is written here that means it is the aries number 2 here that means it is taurus or vrisha number 3 represents gemini or mithuna number 4 represents cancer or kark number 5 represents leo or singh rashi number 6 represents virgo or kanya rashi number 7 represents libra or tula rashi number 8 represents scorpio or vrishchik rashi And number nine represents Dhanu Rashi or Sagittarius. Number ten represents Capricorn or Makar Rashi. Number eleven means Aquarius or Kumbh Rashi. And number twelve represents Pisces or Meen Rashi. So here. ascendant is written in this box and the number here is 9 that 
that means it is Sagittarius. Ascendant is Sagittarius. Ketu is also placed in Sagittarius. Also in Ascendant. Now look at the South Indian chart. Here the signs are fixed. From here it is started. It is Aries or Mesha. It is Taurus. Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. Here the signs are fixed and in the North Indian chart signs are not fixed. There Ascendant is, is fixed. So the chart is uh, I showed in the North Indian style. The chart is the same. So, so the ascendant was Sagittarius. Here where Sagittarius? Number 9 is Sagittarius. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here ascendant short name as AS is written. One thing to know that in North Indian style and East Indian style the plan uh, planets and signs are moving from this side. That means anti-clockwise. But in the South Indian chart it moves clockwise this side. Now take a look at the East Indian style chart. This is Aries or Mesh Rashi. This is Taurus or Brisha. It is Gemini or Mithun. It is Cancer or Kark. It is Leo. Or Shingha, it is Kanya or Virgo, it is Libra or Tula, it is Scorpio or Brishtika, it is Sagittarius or Dhanu, it is Makar or Capricorn, it is Aquarius or Kumbha, it is Pisces or Meena. So the ascendant is in our example chart, the ascendant is Dhanus, that means Sagittarius. It is the Sagittarius sign and the ascendant is written here. So I think you have got an idea about the charts diagram of three types. Now houses. The first house is the house in the zodiac where ascendant is written in English and Lagna in Hindi or Bengali or other Indian language. Which will be the second house will depend on the chart style you are following. If you follow East Indian or North Indian style then the house that comes after first house in anti-clockwise direction will be the second house. Then the third, fourth, fifth, and if you follow the South Indian chart, then the clockwise direction will come after first house, and that will be the second house. Then the third, fourth, fifth, etc. In Sanskrit, house and ascendant are known as bhava and lagna, respectively. And now. I am telling what is the house lord in Sanskrit Bhaves. I am discussing who is the house lord. In the first episode I have discussed which planet is the ruler of which zodiac sign. Ascendant or first house lord will be the lord of the house or sign in which ascendant will be. 
in the same way in which zodiac sign the second house will fall the lord of that zodiac sign will be the second house lord thus the third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh and twelfth house lords are determined for example if anyone's ascendant in aries then ascendant lord and eighth lord will be mars second and seventh lord will be venus third and sixth lord will be mercury fourth lord will be moon the fifth lord will be sun ninth and twelfth lord will be jupiter tenth and eleventh lord will be saturn now look at the example chart to understand clearly look at the chart here ascendant is written ascendant is sagittarius so who will be the lord of ascendant the lord of ascendant will be lord of sagittarius jupiter next second house will be this house because in south indian chart the planets are moving in this direction that means clockwise so this is the second house the second house lord is saturn as the sign lord also saturn this is capricorn this is the third house and the third house lord will be saturn again because it is aquarius and the lord of aquarius is saturn this is the fourth house and it is the pieces the lord of the pieces is jupiter so the lord of fourth house also will be jupiter does the house lords are determined this is the fifth house and it is the aries lord is mars so the fifth lord will be mars for this chart now let's see how we determine the position of planet in the houses which sign and which house look at this chart here the ascendant is sagittarius and lord of ascendant is jupiter jupiter is placed here that means in the 6th house 1 2 3 4 5 6 in taurus lord of ascendant jupiter is placed in taurus and taurus is the 6th house saturn also placed in 6th house with jupiter the second lord saturn saturn also placed in 6th house so the first lord or lord of ascendant and the second and third lord third lord is also saturn so second and third lord saturn is placed in the 6th house with the first house lord or lord of ascendant thus the placement of the planets are judged the fourth lord is jupiter jupiter is placed in the 6th house so we can say the first and fourth lord jupiter is placed in the 6th house with the second and third lord saturn see in the style of north india here the ascendant lord jupiter is placed in a 1 2 3 4 5 6 to 6th house house is counted from the ascendant so take the ascendant as number 1 jupiter is placed in the 6th house 1 2 3 4 5 6 with saturn the second and third lord saturn is placed with jupiter jupiter is also the first and fourth lord 
in this way the placement of the planets are judged this time i will discuss the version of aspect or drishti vision of planets there are four types of planetary vision 25% 50% 75% and full sight or 100% counting from the house in which the planet is located the third and tenth house planets have 25% vision fifth and ninth have 50% vision and fourth and sixth have 75% vision in the seventh house all planets have full vision or aspect or may be called 100% vision there is some exceptions however jupiter's full vision on fifth ninth saturn's full vision on third and tenth mars full vision on fourth and eighth rahu's full vision on 5th 9th and 12th ketu is said to be blind and has no vision or aspect but just as rahu is a point ketu is also a point so if rahu has vision then why ketu does not have vision to know what are rahu and ketu in really watch the video by clicking on the i button you will understand clearly according to mohsi parasara ketu also has the same vision or aspect as rahu most of the educated astrologers judge according to rahu's aspect or vision even if there is this disagreement about this students of astrology will be able to judge its validity through practical application judgment of astrology captures the full vision or 100% vision only of the planet so i am telling the full vision of the planets sun in seventh full vision moon in seventh full vision mars fourth 7th and 8th full vision mercury in 7th full vision jupiter 5th 7th and 9th full vision venus in 7th full vision saturn 3rd 7th and 10th full vision rahu 5th 7th 9th and 12th full vision ketu also 5th 7 9th and 12th full vision now look at the horoscope to understand better now look at the chart ketu he is here acha first i am showing from moon moon has only 7th vision so in the seventh house from moon 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 here the moon aspect is falling in the seventh house from moon's position here is saturn and jupiter in the 6th house 1 2 3 4 5 6 saturn has 3rd 7th and 10th vision so saturn has vision in 1 2 3 here saturn has vision 4 5 6 7 here also has saturn vision 8 9 10 here saturn's aspect is also falling thus the aspects is judged when jupiter is aspecting 
फिफ्थ सेवेंथ एंड नाइन्थ हाउस फ्रॉम दिस हाउस सो द फिफ्थ हाउस फ्रॉम हेयर इज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव हेयर इज जुपिटर्स विजन एंड ऑल्सो ऑन भेनस एंड मार्करी जुपिटर्स दृष्टि ऑन दिस हाउस एंड ऑल्सो मार्करी एंड भेनस विच हाउस इज दिस वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन टेन थाउजेंड सर तो मार्करी एंड भेनस इज प्लेस इन द टेंथ हाउस एंड जुपिटर्स फिफ्थ विशन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव फर्स्ट विशन इज फिफ्थ विशन इज फॉलोइंग इन द टेंथ हाउस एंड ऑल्सो ऑन मार्करी एंड भेनस मार्करी एंड भेनस आर एस्पेक्टेड बाई जुपिटर एंड टेंथ हाउस इज ऑल्सो एस्पेक्टेड बाई जुपिटर तो जुपिटर्स एस्पेक्ट इज इन द टेंथ हाउस सिक्स सेवन दिस इज द ट्वेल्थ हाउस हेयर ऑल्सो जुपिटर्स एस्पेक्ट फॉलोइंग एंड इन दिस हाउस सेकेंड हाउस दिस इज द सेकेंड हाउस हेयर ऑल्सो जुपिटर्स एस्पेक्ट इज फॉलोइंग एंड ऑल्सो ऑन मून जुपिटर इज एस्पेक्टिंग ऑन मून एंड द सेकेंड हाउस हेयर इन दिस वे द एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द प्लैनेट्स इज जज देर इज सम डिफरेंस ऑफ इन द केस ऑफ राहु एंड केतु राहुल एस्पेक्ट इन फिफ्थ सेवेंथ नाइन्थ एंड ट्वेल्थ बट द डायरेक्शन द ऑपोजिट ऑफ द प्लैनेट्स प्लैनेट्स आर मूविंग इन दिस साइड बट राहु एंड केतु आर मूविंग इन दिस साइड सो एस्पेक्ट ऑल्सो बी काउंटेड फ्रॉम दिस साइड तो राहु फिफ्थ एस्पेक्ट विथ बी वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव इन दिस हाउस एंड सेवेंथ एस्पेक्ट विल बी सिक्स सेवन इन दिस हाउस on ascendant 8 9 in the 11th house 10 11 12 in the 8th house rahu is placed in the 7th house and is 12th aspect is falling on 8th house 12 from the Rahu's position, counting in this direction. I think you understand this. Chastel, South Indian Chastel. In this, in this way, the uh, normal planets, this uh, aspect will be just. And in the case of Rahu and Ketu, in this direction. the aspects will be judged just some difference between south indian and east and north indian the direction is the difference otherwise all are same jupiter aspect 1 2 3 4 5 10th house counting from this house 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10000 it is a 10000 on mercury and venus 6 7 in this house the 12th house 8 9 in this house the second house and on moon i think you want to understand the better after practicing again and again the calculation of aspects and position of planets not a little bit hard you you feel it before finishing this episode's lesson i would like to repeat it that the position of planet in the houses and signs two different concepts houses means second house means second house 
it does not indicates any sign and jupiter is placed in the taurus with saturn jupiter and saturn are in taurus it indicates sign it does not indicate any house or bhava that's all for today in the next episode i shall discuss about the significance of zodiac signs like movable fixed and duality it is very important to learn namaskar